Stock Pulse on location at the Stock Pulse Silver Symposium in Spokane. Join me today. I've got Nicole Brewster from Renforth Resources. They trade as RFR in the CSE. And Nicole, all the way from Quebec. Thanks for making the trip. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm down here. We do have some U.S. Uh, shareholders. And I have a U.S. listing, and I'd love to get more U.S. shareholders. So I thought I'd come out and meet a few potential new shareholders. So all yeah. good so far. Yeah. So you have a little interesting story here. Uh, not quite the silver story here, but you're looking for uh, all kinds of those uh, EV metals here. So yeah, let's uh, kind of pull back here and uh, why don't you give us the vibe of the sector? It's getting quite interesting. Um, I've been telling people that this is our industrial revolution. And in fact, I just saw before you asked me to come over a generational nickel opportunity headline from an, elect from an automaker's um, media source. So I think there's people are just waking up to the fact that we need an awful lot of metals. We need metals anyway. And we only have barely enough metals for infrastructure, you know, um, population growth and class mobility of the population. When you layer in energy storage, EVs, charging stations, all of, you know, all of that stuff we need for an EV community or the, e or the energy storage reality, we don't have enough metals. And I think that awareness is dawning slowly. And that's quite exciting from my perspective. Yeah, you do. Uh all the reading you do on the shortages and the shortfalls we'll have, you'd, you'd think that your stock chart was probably hauling right now, but things are a little weak. Why don't you kind of explain that phenomenon to me? Well, me reading and me me uh, saying it is one thing. Getting someone to listen and act on it is a different thing. And frankly, the, the junior space has just been sliding into apathy. And I think it, it's really slowed down in kind of the last two, three weeks. There was a lot of breath held around the Fed and I think the big market called it the wrong way um, but you know this isn't sustainable for me there's a there's strong appetite at a ridiculously low price in my opinion but good for them they're stepping up and bidding right um, but you know the industry the world everybody needs these metals to be found and brought to market and our end of the market is where the opportunity is like a four cent stock, or uh, on the RFRH, I think trades around uh, two cents on the OTCQB. Um, the we're talking about potential multiples in terms of return, and the market's greedy, and greed will go where there's opportunity, and it'll find us soon enough. We've been ignored for a while, but the big boys are doing the right things. They're showing they can run real businesses, and once they demonstrate that they can run real businesses, and they start looking down the food chain at our assets. Um, it'll get very lucrative for everyone involved. But personally, my bet is it's not going to be the mining companies that I end up dealing with. It's going to be the art of auto and, ban and battery manufacturers that are looking to vertically integrate and looking to secure their supply. Like Germany just came with Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen to Canada last week. Last week? Yeah. They called dibs on the country. Our Prime Minister agreed to cooperate with Germany, specifically two auto manufacturers, to provide the raw materials for their commercial endeavors. You can't call dibs on a country, and it's not our Prime Minister's asset to give away, it's my shareholder's asset. But it's kind of funny, they're not the first people, that's the first time a country tried to call dibs. The US <laughs> called dibs. Under the Inflation uh, Reduction Act, they, they uh, identified Canada as a domestic yep. source. The U.S. is calling dibs yeah. on Canada. Germany is calling. You guys dibs didn't on get the Canada. memo. No, dibs has been called. Dibs has been called. Germany, Germany's like trying to play a game, but you know, so the macro is just getting more and more interesting. It's getting into broader and broader media, and I mean, people will see the obvious soon enough. And if you want to be in the space, be it with Renforth or be it with anybody else, you want to get positioned before the the masses figure it out. You want to be the contra You want to be contrary to the market, which means buying right now, not selling. Sure. So for those who didn't make it to see you, I guess uh, give them the, the latest and greatest here. What's the update? Oh, the update is well, we've got 29 kilometers of battery minerals on surface. It's polymetallic, so it's nickel, copper, and uh, zinc, cobalt, and platinum group elements, as well as some silver actually. Um, so polymetallic de-risks it. We have road access. We have hydroelectric power. So we have spectacular logistics. We have a rail line. We're within an hour of Canada's only copper nickel smelter. We won't build another smelter in my country, and I very much doubt it in yours. 
So logistics are spectacular. We're in a secure jurisdiction. Um, the minerals are at surface. We're in an established mining camp. They already moved half the town I'm next door to for a gold mine. So we're in fields with nothing. We'll be able to mine. And I mean, the update is right now, as we speak, we're permitting our next round of uh, work that would have us in the field, hopefully late September. And our permit's in place except the clerk's on vacation, so we're trying to get the boss to do the clerk's job and issue the permit. But that's exciting. The First Nations signed off on that permit happily. Um, when I'm next in the field, I'll take the chief to the property and just explain to that community how mining really works and what it can also mean for them, how they can participate. So it's all exciting. It's all moving in the right direction. Yeah, let's uh, get into that point real quick about how important the communities are and, uh, and these people who, uh, investors, I guess, who maybe not understand how hard your job really is. That's nine tenths of the battle, isn't it? Really getting the community on your team? It is. Now, I'm super fortunate. I'm sitting uh, near the towns of Cadillac and Valdor, uh, Cadillac and Malartic. The Cadillac mining camp was Canada's most lucrative gold mining camp historically. Uh, Malartic hosts Canada's largest open pit gold mine now, low grade gold mine four kilometers long, the open pit. Huge mountain of tailings behind it. Uh, we're not far from Rouen Noranda, which is the copper capital of the nation. The sign says in Quebec, which means the copper capital of Quebec, not Canada, but anyway. And uh, we're near Val d'Or, operating gold mines, the Valley of Gold. So where I am, mining is probably touching literally every resident there. If they're not, they, I would venture every family has at least one member working directly for mining itself and all the industries that are around it, the service industries. You labor, you know, it's so tight there that the McDonald's closed. Have you ever heard of a McDonald's closing? I've never heard of that. First, it was only open Wednesday to Saturday. Then it just closed. They couldn't get people to work at McDonald's because the mines hire it, better jobs. So that community is on side with the idea of mining. They want to see it proceed. They understand implicitly it means jobs, it means revenue, it means new people in town, all the knock-on effects. The First Nation that we're concerned with is Picogan, and that's an anglicized name, but an hour north near the town of Amos. Um, they're interested in that their approach to us and the conversations we have are how can they participate in real terms? Like, being equal to everyone else, give us the opportunity to bid on your tenders. Give us the opportunity to win the work. Don't hand us anything. Let us, but, but open the door. Let us in the room to see if we can be part of the story. So, so for example, when we chip, they have chipping ability to chip wood. We ask them to tender each time. They have chipped for us in the past and then they've not chipped for us, but you know, they haven't always been available either. So. So that, that community is fine with mining and it's partly, my job will partly be to educate them as to how they really do have an opportunity to, to you know, find jobs, get people trained, it, utilize their, open their own small business and then utilize that business as, you know, Surimo moves forwards and I'm pretty sure becomes a mine. What does that look like? When I worked in Spain for a client with an old mine and brought it back into production, when they wanted the, you know, at the mine site, they needed to be able to feed people. The Spanish come in, they have their espresso and their their uh, tostado with uh, with oil, and then they go to work, and then they have their coffee break. So they got the little the little town nearby, the, the coffee shop, the only thing there, came and built a coffee shop at the mine. And then as the mine grew, that business grew, and eventually, and the town grew, and it became like a full-fledged catering company. And as the mine got rebuilt, they got a full cafeteria built for them and you know employed people that's generational and Suramo's sure. big Suramo will be generational too and there's lots of opportunity for everyone to benefit be it a shareholder or be it a person who gets a job or be it a small business who gets a customer so that's that's our role is to engage the community and bring everyone along so that it's not my success it's it's a team everyone benefits in yeah. the end yeah, one last one here, I guess, talking about uh, benefits here. How do investors benefit by hunting hidden treasures with Nicole Brewster and Renforth? You know, it's exciting what we do. It's exciting to me. Now, I'm a bit of a nerd and a geek, but it's still exciting. But it's a story. And it's, a, you know, you can even come to the property. There's road access. Drive, drive up, come to Quebec, fly in, I'll drive you to the site. You know, it, it's a neat thing to do. 
You can see video on my website that we shot with a drone of us walking around the site. But we're taking a field and we're building something. And you know, you hear the term wealth creation. Well, what does that really mean? Does that mean the interest your bank pays you if they even pay interest anymore? That's not wealth creation. That's just trying to keep things on an even keel. Wealth creation, we're starting from nothing. We're starting from a field that historically, they had taken a, some samples for gold and when they hadn't found gold, they just said, screw it, walked away. Now we've gone back to that field and said, well, while you didn't find gold, you found some other stuff that we actually care more about than gold. Like this is black gold. This is what's gonna power the future. You know, so it's a, it's a story. It's, it's, a neat co it's a neat thing to see grow. You build it. Unfortunately, we're not really hunting the hidden treasure. We're just trying to figure out how big the treasure we I have is. Treasure is. But six areas of mineralization on the property. We're only worried about two of them right now. And we've only explored about 30% of the, we've only walked on probably less than 30% of the ground. So still lots to come. Will I do it? I hope to sell the company, so maybe not. But, but I mean, I send emails out with my thoughts, with the macro, with the mi micro, with what we're doing and why. And I talk to people like you, I talk to anyone who stands still long enough to listen. But it's a neat thing and it's a cycle. It's what built Canada. Yep. Early fortunes in the United States were built this way. Sure. We're taking nothing and we're making something. Shareholders will benefit because as the asset grows in importance and value, the stock price in an efficient market will appreciate. We're not in an efficient market right now, so that creates opportunity. But when the, the eyes of the macro world turn our way, which they will, because we're cyclical and we're long overdue for it, when they turn our way, if you're already in the sandbox, you'll benefit the most. Okay, well, if you want to get in the sandbox with uh, Nicole Brewster there, uh, <laughs> Renforth Resources, RFR, the Toronto Venture Exchange, and uh, yeah, uh, certainly uh, in demand there with your medals. So Yeah, RFHRF on the RFHRF, OTCQB. Yep, in the States here. So, uh, Nicole, thanks for making the trip all the way from Quebec. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Good to be here.